The allure of the SCP Foundation is not just the unique and fascinating twist it puts on the horror genre, but also the overall realism and death of the world that has been created around it. Many groups of interest are at least partially based on real-life concepts and organizations, which lends the feeling that the SCP universe could exist, humanizing this universe of myths and monsters. Please note that my descriptions do not necessarily describe every aspect of each group of interest. They're simply brief synopses of each, and I recommend reading further for even more depth. Make sure to subscribe to buy me a better mic, as I'm currently using a $5 one from China. And on that note, let's get started. The SCP Foundation, or simply the Foundation, is everyone's favorite morally gray shadow agents. They will go to any lengths to secure, contain, and protect. They are concerned with securing all knowledge from the general public, containing and studying anomalies, and protecting the well-being of the human race. They've saved the world numerous times over, although how they do it is not necessarily something you want to see. Summed up best by their motto, we die in the dark so that you can live in the light. The Global Occult Coalition is the primary counterpart to the Foundation. Formed and backed by the United Nations, they share the Foundation's goals of maintaining secrecy, protecting the human race, and learning more about the anomalous. How they do it, however, is where the two differ. The GOC is more than willing to destroy anomalies to achieve their goals. After all, dead anomalies cause no breaches. Despite this seemingly clear divide, there have been instances where the Foundation has destroyed anomalies and where the GOC has contained or negotiated with more harmless anomalies. They occasionally work with the Foundation to combat greater threats, and while the two sometimes get into squabbles, they ultimately know how to leave each other alone. The Chaos Insurgency was formed as a splinter cell of the Foundation, founded by the former members of MTF Alpha-1, designated as Red Right Hand. Originally, the MTF staged a betrayal so that the O5 Council would carry out morally dubious missions without scrutiny. However, Alpha-1 soon truly betrayed the Foundation, forming the insurgency's equivalent of the O5 Council, Delta Command. While their goals and motives are shrouded in mystery, they are typically characterized by few things. Their willingness to weaponize the anomalous, their general disregard for human life, and their burning hate boner for the Foundation. Also, they have two logos for some reason. The Church of the Broken God is a church that worships Mekane, the deity of order, technology, and intelligence. It's said that long ago, Mekane fought Yaldabaoth, the deity of chaos, flesh, and primal urges. Yaldabaoth created humanity, and Mekane gave them intelligence. But Yaldabaoth wanted humans to stay savage. Long story short, Mekane won the cosmic custody battle against the Karen God, but broke apart to seal him away in order to defeat him later, because even God likes to procrastinate. Members of the church wish to find and repair their god, and often replace parts of their bodies with magical cybernetics. They generally cause trouble for the Foundation and GOC, calling them heretics, but have cooperated to face greater threats. While the Church of the Broken God worships Mekin, the Sarkic cults conversely worship Yaldabaoth. There are two major sects of Sarkicism, the Proto-Sarkics and the Neo-Sarkics. Proto-Sarkics are extremely technophobic and secretive, and generally value humility and self-sacrifice. Neo-Sarkics have embraced modernity, and value the attainment of power and fulfillment of desires. However, the two generally hold several core tenets in common. They practice human sacrifice, cannibalism, believe that desire is the measure of all things, and they worship and spread disease, which leads me to believe that the state of Florida is one big psychic cult. Many psychics practice hemomancy, or flesh crafting, which is exactly what it sounds like, and believe that apotheosis, the act of ascending to godhood, is possible. In addition, they believe in theophagy, the ritual consumption of their gods. neo circuits believe that if they are powerful enough to devour their god, it is not only their right, but their duty to do so. Marshall Carter and Dark Limited, MCD, like true capitalists, have one goal in mind, money. They procure an auction off the anomalous to extremely rich clientele for the sole purpose of profit. They're extremely pragmatic, and they have cooperated with the Foundation, but more out of their own interests than any of the goodness of their hearts. Most of the time, they avoid direct confrontation, as the Foundation is powerful, and conflict would only bring about loss and profits. They don't like using force to achieve their goals, rather they prefer to use money and political pressure as a means of attacking. In a world full of monsters and magic, money is still the most powerful of them all. The Serpent's Hand is a loose affiliation of individuals that believe that anomalies should be made public knowledge, and that harmless anomalies should be released from confinement. Many of their members are anomalies themselves, and are based in the Wanderer's Library, an interdimensional space that holds every book that ever has been, ever will be, and never has been written. They hate the Foundation with a burning passion, but the GOC even more so. Prometheus Labs Incorporated is, in a nutshell, a magical Sony and Microsoft Apple. Originally founded as a parascience research lab for the benefit of mankind, they quickly expanded to a giant conglomerate that owned everything. 
from technology to energy to everything in between. We work with the Foundation to preserve moments. They strongly resisted Foundation oversight. However, despite their massive wealth, they eventually managed to crumble due to some poor financial decisions, leaving behind its subsidiaries, labs, and children companies, which many GOIs were quick to try and gobble up. The Unusual Incidents Unit, or the UIU, is a division of the American Federal Bureau of Investigation that is tasked with investigating the paranormal, otherworldly, and unusual. They were founded during the Cold War by President Herbert Hoover, but following the end of the Cold War, they were generally considered useless, being called derogatory names like the X-Files and UI useless, not for a lack of competent agents, but a lack of funding, tension from the US government, and proper experience with the anomalies. The Foundation and the GOC's influence are likely the only thing keeping the UIU from being dissolved, as they're kept around to deal with minor tasks. They're effectively the underdogs of the paranormal world, and it's kind of hard not to root for them when they're trying so hard. Crew Division P is the Soviet counterpart of the UIU. Established by Stalin, they worked to study the anomalies for the benefit of the Soviet Union. Eventually, following the dissolution of the Union, they experienced numerous budget cuts and downsizing attempts, causing many personnel to defect. Some found work with Marshall Carter and Dark, some joined the Chaos Insurgency, and others retired and found peace. The Office for the Reclamation of Islamic Artifacts is a government agency based in Iran that seeks to collect and sometimes weaponize the anomalous. They despise the Foundation greatly, regarding it as a colonial presence. Although its resources are quite considerable, it has been limited in power by infighting caused by personal and philosophical differences. The Imperial Japanese Anomalous Matters Examination Agency was Japan's official anomaly agency from the period between the Meiji Restoration in 1868 and until the end of World War II in 1945. It operated with the benefit of the Japanese Empire Mutt, but it was officially disbanded following the end of World War II. Or so they thought. You see, many loyalists kept it secretly alive, focusing on political gains for nationalist agendas and the preservation of Japan's anomalous ecology. Are We Cool Yet? AWCY is a loose group of anomalous artists, otherwise known as anartists, that work to make art using paranormal phenomena. Often these pieces of art are intended to convey a message, and can range from harmless to dead. They're identifiable by their catchphrase, Are We Cool Yet? And the answer is no, it's the point of art if you kill the person looking at it. Dr. Wondertainment is either an anomalous toy maker or an anomalous group of toy makers. The true identity of Dr. Wondertainment themselves is largely unknown with several different depictions. Wondertainment produces children's toys, some of which are fantastical and whimsical, and some that will make you the subject of an Oompa Loompa song. They're most famous for their collection of anomalous humans, known as the Little Misters. Herman Fuller's Circus of the Disquieting is a circus that uses anomalous acts and attractions to earn money. Notably, they have managed to entirely avoid the Foundation. They regularly take in anomalous freaks for their sideshows, and they claim to treat everyone that's a part of their act as a family. The Mana Charitable Foundation, or MCF, is an interfaith humanitarian organization that seeks to aid the impoverished, typically in war-torn regions and third-world countries. They have a policy to freely distribute anomalies in any of their byproducts, should they deem them beneficial. However, while the anomalies they have used have never caused any intentional harm, their zeal in distributing what they perceive as helpful and lack of proper long-term scientific study of what an anomaly's effects entail have led to unintentional consequences following their action. Three Portlands is a city-state that functions as a paranormal enclave for over 80,000 people. It's located in Pocket Dimension, accessible by entrances in Portland, Maine, Portland, Oregon, and the Isle of Portland in the United Kingdom. Everyone living within it is aware of the anomalous to some degree, and as such it is monitored by the UIU, but largely left to its own devices. Anderson Robotics is a paratech company run by the mysterious and sinister Vincent Anderson, specializing in the sale of anomalous androids, artificial intelligences, and cybernetics. It's based out of three Portlands, and they have proven themselves capable in avoiding Foundation influence. Deer College is a liberal arts and occult sciences college based out of three Portlands, as produced numerous notable alumni, such as the previously mentioned Vincent Anderson and Esther Lesbian Gengar Cody, one of the co-founders of Gamers Against Weed. It also has a GOC-sponsored rival, ICSUT Portland. Gamers Against Weed are the epic gamers of the SCP universe. Emphasis on the game. Primarily operating online, they use anomalies to make memes, play pranks, satirize other groups of interest, and shit posts. Their tomfoolery typically doesn't go too far due to the fact that the group holds largely pacifistic views, although some harmful accidents have occurred. Their group has no notable stances regarding cannabis. The Ambrose restaurants are a collection of anomalous fine dining restaurants that serve anomalous food made from anomalous creatures with anomalous techniques. 
They have been observed to work with Marshall Carter Dark, AWCY, and other GIs. That's all there is to them, really. Although, I just want to take a moment to say that Ambrose Restaurants is my favorite GOI. Imagine just seeing an eldritch god and saying, I wonder how that tastes like. Fucking mad lads. Like, tell me you wouldn't want to eat some Cthulhu Calamari. The Horizon Initiative is an organization founded by the three major Abrahamic religions in an attempt to unify them, those being Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Depending on how they perceive an anomaly's place in their dogma, they will either contain, destroy it, or utilize it. In spite of syncretization efforts, there is much infighting amongst the organization, with corruption, personal biases, and whether or not pork is a viable deli meat plate. Will they be able to unify in the face of a common enemy? I doubt it. The Church of the Second High Toth is a religion that believes that the universe we currently live in is not the first one, but rather the second, with the previous one being destroyed. Seven inhabitants of the first High Toth ascended to godhood, and then six of them promptly died. The last remaining one, Rakhmu Lucin, is currently chilling inside the sun and throwing up magical gang signs to stop some eldritch horrors from entering our solar system. The church has to regularly make blood sacrifices to him in order to keep Rakhmu Lucin juiced. He doesn't receive sacrifices, he'll die and naturally, will die too. The fifth church is heavily based on real-life cults. While they don't have a clearly defined doctrine, there are a few identifying fifth traits. Weird surrealist imagery involving stars and entering the fifth world, brainwashing members, blind devotion, a few celebrity members, and of course, an obsession with the number five. Also, their god is a starfish or something. Plus, they have a banger of a theme song. I'll drop a link in the description. The Black Queen is a GOI closely related to the Serpent's Hand, made entirely up of alternate dimension versions of Alison Chow, the daughter of Foundation Doctor, Dr. Charles Gears, armed with the knowledge of the Wanderer's Library, and quite literally an infinite amount of daddy issues, they seek to gain knowledge from across the multiverse for their goals. Alex Lava University is a university located in an alternate universe where Roman and Greek cultures did not fall and remain the strongest modern day influences. The university itself, however, is located in an alternate Earth equivalent of Tennessee. They're extremely technologically advanced, but due to their Roman influences, they never adopted things like the Arabic numeral system and lowercase letters. The Chicago Sphere is an anomalous crime syndicate that first appeared during America's Prohibition era, amassing large amounts of power and wealth, their influence stretching across the country. Think C.D. Noor films, street thugs, cigars, and moonshine. They would use the fantastical for seemingly mundane things, probably summoning demons to rob banks. Of course, once the ban on alcohol was lifted, they fell apart. Or so we thought. Whispers of successors and splinter groups seem to have made their way to the modern day era. The Three Moons Initiative is a human military police force operating in the Corbett, an afterlife characterized by its three moons. Originally, the inhabitants of Corbenic were from an alternate Earth, which was destroyed. They formed a pact with the Corbanese deity, Jalakara, and sought to protect Otherworld from experiencing the same fate they did. However, poor communication, military overreach, and bureaucratic problems have led them to maintain a tenuous peace with the Foundation. Humans who die go to the Corbanic, where they are judged on their moralities and punished or rewarded accordingly. Nobody is a GOI shrouded in mysterious mystery. We don't know what they want or what they do. And sometimes they help, and sometimes they hinder the Foundation. Only a single member of Nobody is ever operating at a time, complete with Fedora and trench coat. In fact, we don't even know whether they're a group at all. It seems that Nobody is unable to interact with reality the same way we do. There is an interpretation that Nobody is actually used as an excuse by Foundation agents who fuck up their missions big time, blaming Nobody for the reason why the mission failed. Of course, there is no canon in the SCP universe, so take that as you will. The only information the Foundation has regarding the Honoroid Collective is the dream-based artifacts that they leave behind. Although nobody is quite sure what they are, they are currently believed to be a collective consciousness of dreaming persons and dream-based entities inhabiting a dream-based world, right as a sort of hive mind in metaspace. Wilson's Wildlife Solutions, WWS, is a group of interest based in Clackamas County, Oregon, more specifically in Bort. Their primary directive is to take care of wildlife in the area, whether anomalous or non-anomalous. While they're aware of the existence of the anomalous, they don't really give a shit about anything except their animals. They love their jobs, so no matter how many times they fail, they're willing to get back up, and I can respect them for that. They're currently under Foundation oversight, and they're allowed to operate as long as secrecy is not compromised.
ParaWatchWiki is an online forum of conspiracy theorists and amateur writers dedicated to cataloging the supernatural. A throwback to 4chan's Paranormal Board, where SCP first started all those years ago. Certain members of the forum may have possibly had fleeting encounters with anomalies or other groups of interest, although it's unlikely they knew what they were seeing. They generally have little to no knowledge of the truth, although they like to consider themselves woke. The Foundation is leaving them in operation as a means of misinformation. The Daylights were an evolutionarily divergent human species that forms matriarchal societies around Mongolia. They practiced cannibalism, human sacrifices, and other generally fun things. They originally collapsed following a failed military invasion in China, but SCP-140, a book detailing Daylight history, has changed that. If any ink or blood is introduced to 140, the book will gain new text, and Daylight history will change retroactively in accordance to what was in the book. It's said that the Sarkic cults and the Mechanites, also known as the Church of the Broken God, first began in Daylight society. The Factory is a mysterious organization that constantly mass-produces anomalies through unknown means. The very embodiment of an industrial hell, there is no end goal but to have more. It does not just overwork its workers, it consumes them to spit out subpar products. It does not care, it does not relent, and it will consume, and consume, and produce, until there is nothing left. The Shark Punching Center, SPC, is an organization dedicated wholly to the sole purpose of punching sharks. They will use anomalies to punch sharks, they will punch anomalous sharks, they'll punch you, you filthy Salatian sympathizer. An alternate universe version of a foundation, they don't look at an anomaly's special containment procedures, they look at its Salatian purgatorial capabilities. Under the command of the High Pugil Lord, they'll punch sharks right in their stupid fucking faces because the sharks won't do it themselves. Because, because they don't have this. Because they're sharks. Okay, I'll be serious now. <laughs> the SPC started as a parody GOI because people kept misspelling SCP as SPC. That's literally it. The Children of the Night, known collectively as SCP-1000, and colloquially as Bigfoot, were the previously dominant species on Earth. Nocturnal and armed with hyper-advanced technology, they ruled the Earth until their demise led to the rise of humans. Currently, they're hiding underground. They claim they do not want to retake the Earth, although the truth of these claims is still unknown. Typically, at this point, somber music would play and we would all realize that humans were the real monsters all along, but they're no less monsters than we are. They built huge cities, and succumbed to the same vices of greed and selfishness as we did. They took ground-up human bones as an aphrodisiac, seeing us as essentially animals. According to some interpretations, they even overthrew the previously dominant species before them, of which the Earth has had five in total. The Fey are a subspecies of humanity. They possess advanced magic and technology, and according to some, ruled the Earth before us. Iron is deadly to them, which is probably a bad weakness to have when iron is the fourth most abundant element in the Earth's crust, but uh, who am I to judge? There's still pockets of fade left in this world, and they don't seem to like us. That wraps it up for 37 major GOIs present in the SCP universe. Of course, there are plenty of minor SCP GOIs that haven't been fully explored, relatively new, and or foreign. Now normally this would be the end of the video, but you came here for GOIs, and I'll give you GOIs. It's time for the Minor GOI Lightning Round! 10 words or less per GOI. Start! Black Box Industrial. Company that's a literal hole in reality. Accelerate the Future. ATF. Company that targets niche markets like furries for quick profit. American Secure Containment Initiative. ASCI. A foundation predecessor that formed in America during the 1700s. Atari Arcadia. Makes spooky video games involving children's souls and black magic. Autocephalus Mission of Moldova, Catholic Studying Miracles. Leader doesn't know he's a reality vendor. Avalar Professional Products, APP, sells anomalous office supplies. Their leader has transhumanist gold. Children of the Torch, or Sha Culture, existed during the Shang Dynasty. Technologically advanced, worshipped golden crows. Praetorian Office of Secret Wisdom, acted as an anomalous containment organization for the Roman Empire. Department of Abnormalities, DOA branch of the Foundation, kept secret from most Foundation members. From the Chinese branch, the Galactic Federation, a cult that combines Buddhism and space-age science fiction. The Golden Horde, time-traveling Mongols, want to bury Genghis Khan somewhere untouched. The Hunting Club of Fauna and Flora from the Portuguese branch, they hunt anomalous fauna with sometimes anomalous weapons. His or Her Majesty's Foundation for the Secure Containment of the Paranormal, a precursor to the Foundation in the UK. Inevitability Industries, run by clones of one man, 
sells safe sex products. Just Girly Things, an online magazine that wants to enforce traditional gender roles. Light Courier Enterprises, a company from a post-apocalyptic future, sells retro-futuristic doomsday prepping products. Mages Academy from the German branch, it's an academy for mages. The Medician Academy of Occult Art from the Italian branch, collects anomalous art and stores it in a secret museum. Obscura Corp, Magic Nazis, why, why even try anymore? Pentagram, the United States Department of Defense's anomalous counterpart. The Society of Atheists for the Protection from Perilous and Hindering Institutionalized Religions Everywhere, or the Society of Atheists Partisans of Progress for the Halt of Irrational and Religious Enemies. I almost bit my tongue trying to spit these out. Or Sapphire, from the French branch, a group of atheists trying to disprove God and anomalies. Stacker's Coffee House and Bar, an odd whimsical bar with open mic night on Thursdays. Sugarcone Confectionery, a company that makes disturbing confectioneries, definitely didn't meet sanitation standards. Totally Soft, software company that makes very strange, often broken games. YWTGTHFT, or yeah, we're totally going to hell for this. Manufactures sadistic products, seemingly self-aware of their horribleness. So that was 50 groups of interest within the SCP universe. Next time on SCP Simplified. Join me as I simplify, explain, and break down the hidden messages of SCP-5000. Why?